Okay, hey guys, and welcome to another great week at the Underwater Realm video blog. It's week 27. Uh, you might remember back in week 26 when we were talking about our test shoot in Shepperton Studios that we mentioned an underwater audition that had taken place the same week while we were up in London. Well, we've had a flood of questions coming in on the blog asking what exactly an underwater audition is and why the hell you might choose to do one. So we're going to be going into a little bit more detail about that day this week. Now, Ordinarily, when casting for a role, there's a number of different things that I'm looking for personally. Um, first and foremost is how could they look for the role? Let's be frank, you can't always tell from a headshot on the internet. So first of all is how well does this person fit the role that I'm looking to cast? There's also their general attitude, what they might be like to work with as a person. The ability to work to direction is a really, really big one for me. It's no good having somebody that can always deliver the same performance if they can't modify that performance when I direct them so. The other thing is the range of performance that they're capable of. Some people have a very narrow range, some people have a very broad range. So we're looking to ascertain all of those things with a traditional role, but with some of these underwater roles, there is one very special quality that we're looking for on top of that, and, uh, and that's really what the underwater auditions are there to ascertain. And the quality I'm talking about is the ability to look natural underwater. It's not to be comfortable underwater, but to look comfortable underwater, and they are two very different things. For example, um, I personally am very comfortable under the water, perfectly happy taking my mask off, regulator out, I can swim around on the bottom of a pool all day. But you point a camera at me, and I start to look like a bit of a moron. Um, now, conversely, you get Eve under the water and take a couple of stills of her, like these ones that we took when we were doing the photo shoot with Richard Budd a couple of months back. People actually believe that these stills are faked and that they're one of our visual effects tests, but they're not. They're 100% real. It just happens that Eve looks particularly natural underwater. And it's that quality that we're looking for in the actors that we're auditioning. Now, we had 20 actors auditioning for four roles, and we wanted to get through all that in one day to make it as efficient as it was physically possible. So first off, we decided that we were gonna audition them in male-female pairs, and we were gonna give them scenes to work through. Now, this obviously benefits them um, in terms of performance because they have somebody to act against. It also speeds up our time span for the day. It means that we're doing 10 sessions instead of 20. But it also means that when you're down in the pool and you've got your mask off and your regulator out, it's very easy to feel very, lost I guess um, and also ganged up on by the camera crew. If you've got another actor a lot of your focus is there and it takes your mind off some of the, the stresses of being underwater so it worked really really well but nevertheless we've got 10 pairs of actors that we've got to get through an audition filmed and out safely within one day which is quite an undertaking. So in order to achieve this, we reached out to a number of partners. Um, first and foremost in, char in charge of the safety was Simon from Lodge Scuba. Now Lodge Scuba is a scuba company just down the road from the pool that we were using in London. Um, Simon actually kindly himself and some of his staff members functioned as safety divers for the day and they also provided us with a, a load of equipment and compressed air, everything we needed for the day. Um, now those safety divers we would sink into the pool on compressed air obviously and they would be responsible for one of these actors each. So as the actors would swim around and eventually come down to the bottom of the pool, they would be holding on to a weight belt that the safety diver would provide them with. They'd be given a regulator so that they could breathe. The safety divers would give them masks if they didn't have masks. And they would also be giving them buddy phones so that they could listen to what we were saying on our communications devices. So we had safety divers down there to look after the actors, but we needed to capture that performance so that we could watch through it, discuss it with the producers, and, and really go through each one of those actors and match them up with stills just to see how they paired up against each other. Um, in order to capture all of this, it was necessary to bring on a new member of the team who we haven't introduced to any of you guys yet, but it's a guy called Rich Stevenson of Dive Solutions. Now, Rich is a fantastic guy who's come on board and now is in charge of all of our underwater filming needs. Um, he's actually providing a great wealth of equipment and expertise from his base down here in the southwest. Um, he's providing us with access to a specialist diving media boat, um, as well as numerous cameras, lighting equipment, diving equipment, and, and stuff. So it's been a real, real bonus having Rich on board, but this was the first time we actually got to work with him on a shoot. So Rich came along and brought two cameras. Um, for the camera geeks out there, it's a, a Canon EOS 5D Mark II in an underwater housing, uh, and also a Sony EX1. Sony EX1 with a, the standard zoom lens, and the, uh, the Canon EOS 5D with a, I believe, a 16mm L series, but uh, I might have to check that. Now, both very, very different cameras, and you can see here there's a, there's a vast difference in the quality of the footage there as well. Um, not that one's better than the other, they're just very, very different cameras. But it was really interesting operating the 5D, which we actually had on a tripod most of the time, and the EX1, which was, although a very big, metal, bulky underwater housing that's very, very difficult to move around on land, 
almost perfectly neutrally buoyant underwater and you can just swim around with this thing and create some really really effortless shots traveling through the water so it's been a really good experience um, to have Rich and Eve filming alongside each other um, getting in for close-ups one on each actor so that we can review all of that footage and see exactly all the nuance of that performance that you might miss underwater in order to organize everything there as well, Rich brought along a set of full face masks, which was a completely new experience for me as a diver, but a full face mask with a regulator in the front, so you don't have to bite down on anything. Um, it's a much easier breathe there as well, and a much more natural diving experience. And in addition to that, the masks also have communications. So I can stand negatively buoyant, stood on the bottom of the pool, talking to two actors and talking to my camera crew, and directing the whole scene underwater. So it was a really, really wonderful experience and something we hope to, uh, to roll out across the rest of the underwater filming we're doing on the project. Um, I'm gonna now leave you with a montage of some of the best moments of the day and uh, enjoy. We will see you next week for some props and set design work on the Underwater Realm video blog.